Hello, I'm Sally Brown and I'm going to be talking to you today about some tips for staff on giving feedback to students in ways that are going to be beneficial to you, enable you to do it successfully without running yourself into the ground with excessive work. And I'm going to start off in the effective domain in the first place because I think one of the things we need to remember, however much marking we do, that the feedback we give students is being received by a real human being. And a real human being needs to have supportive advice that's going to enable them to take notice of it without being hugely impacted by it either negatively or that sort of sensation of rabbits in the headlines. So I'm very convinced by David Bowd's suggestion that we should be looking at feedback in terms of the language and avoiding where possible using what he calls final language. That is language that gives students nowhere to go. Language like useless or terrible or worst of all, hopeless. So we're thinking about the human being at the end, but we're also going to try and make sure that across the programme or course team, we're going to be looking at feedback that is reasonably consistent so that some people aren't going to be getting lots and lots of feedback from one of the tutors and barely anything from the other. That causes great student dissatisfaction and is likely to make real grievance possibilities. And I talked about the possibility that we need to do this in efficient and effective ways. And therefore, I'm going to suggest that one of the things that we do is look at, rather than writing the same thing again and again and again, getting shorter every time for different students, we try and look at the use of statement banks of some kind. That is, that whole set of things that you find yourself regularly writing on student work and that you often will say in slightly different ways, but sometimes you want to say a bit more and you're tired of writing. And by this I mean you start putting together a list of the most common things you say and use those to intersperse within the comments section of your electronic marking. Now, I do think that the future is definitely electronic marking rather than handwriting on students' work. Handwriting on students' work is terribly inefficient and not very helpful for students whose first language isn't English who use a different alphabet, for students who are dyslexic or visually impaired in some way, and students who just can't read your terrible writing. So we do need to move to using electronic assessment, and that means that the whole business of giving feedback efficiently and effectively gets easier so long as we're thinking hard about not writing things again and again. So you might want to say, when you're doing a graph, for example, um, remember to mark the axes, remember to make sure the units are clear, remember to um, make sure that we know what the graph is all about. But you might also want to say, refer to this wonderful resource that's available for you online that's on the course website, and that will enable you to have a lot more to say without necessarily writing it in the box. So the key things I'm trying to emphasise is how important feedback is to students. But they don't always know that themselves. The key thing with students is that we have to emphasise for them that it's really important that they actually read and make use of feedback. Not just, oh, I got a 69 and chuck it in the bag. Or, oh, I got 46, but that's enough. We want them to read the carefully crafted comments that we put on their work and to take notice on it. Because if they don't take notice, then it's all going to be wasted and it can't be part of a dialogue for feedback, which most of the experts on feedback would argue is a key element of making feedback part of assessment for learning, not just assessment of learning.